Hello and welcome along to another episode of the Tackling Sport Podcast and it's Daniel here joined once again by my brother Sean. How's it going? And we're back for Premier League fan predictions after a long exile and we're delighted to welcome back our reigning champ Shane. It's Shane Sexton, Manchester United fan. Shane, it's been so long now that people forget you're on four in a row, which is already the record and you're going for an unprecedented once again five in a row. Yeah, four in a row, Dan. A bit like Andre Arshavin and Arsenal. So, yeah, delighted. Great to be back. Um, obviously, with Cheltenham and international football, the Premier League is, has sort of taken a back seat, but looking forward to it this weekend. Absolutely. So with that kind of Cheltenham team and we we're thinking of who we want to take on and over the last couple of weeks, we tried to get you beat and this time we're actually going to do it. So with Aston Villa fan and horse racing pundit, Andrew Blair White. Andrew, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Dan. Good to be on. I'm not sure whether I can get Shane beat, to be honest, but we'll, we'll give it a good stab. Um, yeah, geez, you had to bring up the Villa fan early doors as well, I suppose, but uh, for my sins. Um, but yeah, no, looking forward to it. And just before we get into it, what's it like being a, a Villa fan? I suppose you had the roller coaster of relegation or almost relegation last season, and then a brilliant start this season. I know it's petered off in the last few weeks. Oh, it's been great this year, to be honest, especially compared to last year. Last year was hopeless. Uh, I was resigned. I remember actually being over in Cheltenham last year, and me and my dad watched us watched Villa on the Monday night in a pub, being crushed by Leicester four 0 or something. I thought we're one hundred percent going down. Um, then we had a bit of luck go our way last year. I think Watford completely bottled us, really. Mm. Uh, but th- this year's been class. Um, I know it's maybe petered out a little bit the last couple of weeks, but geez, if you offered me 15th at the start of the year, I'd have snapped your hand off. And I think the worst we're going to finish is probably 12th to 13th. So um, that would be a, a success in my eyes, anyway. Absolutely. I think it's mad, though, isn't it mad that Villa should have been relegated, except they forgot to turn VAR on against Sheffield <laughs> United. Yeah, <laughs> well, the I'm championship gl- wasn't for that. Yeah, fair play, fair play. exactly. Geez, they've they've done no issue turning the VAR on this year now, though. Geez, Ollie Watkins <laughs> had around four um, four goals called offside for the the whole length of a hand put together between the four of them, with them being offside. But, geez, it's a fine margins, but yeah, no, it was a bit of luck last year, anyway. Could be Absolutely. worse. Steve Bruce. Steve Bruce could still be in charge. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Leading us to the depths of League One when he was in charge. Sean, um, obviously, master, Sean's a massive Steve Bruce fan, but he's kind of gone off that bandwagon the last few weeks, haven't you, Sean? No, I like him. I just don't like him at some of the clubs he's at. I think he's he's good at he's good like what he did for Hull. That's that's where he should be. Yeah. He shouldn't be he shouldn't be at big clubs like Newcastle or Villa, I don't think. Him and Big Sam, I suppose he didn't do well in mm. Newcastle. But listen, we'll get straight into it, lads. Chelsea versus West Brom, 12-30 game. And just for people who haven't listened before, it's three. you get three points for a correct score, uh, uh, one point for a correct result, and the winner stays on. So Chelsea, West Brom, and we'll go to you, Andrew. Um, how do you see this uh, game go? Well, I think Chelsea are going to win, to be honest. Um, look, they've been very impressive since Thomas Tuchel's taken over. Certainly at one stage, Villa and, and Chelsea were actually quite cu- close in the league. The worst thing that Chelsea could have done for, from our point of view was sack Lampard and bring in a guy that actually knows what he's doing. Um, I think that they'll win here. I think they'll win to nil as well. West Brom don't have that many goals in them and, and Chelsea don't concede too many. So I've gone a bit a bit out there, but I think Chelsea will win 3-0. 3-0. We'll go to you, Shane. Um, I guess Big Sam, I just look at the table here. They're 10 points off safety. I presume they're gone. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I just can't see West Brom. Really, I don't see where, they, where they're going to score goals, especially against this Chelsea team. Um, I think the last time Chelsea conceded a goal was like back in February against Southampton. Uh, two shows really just put a, put in a really solid structure. They don't. They're not the most entertaining to watch. They don't blow sides away, but it's effective. Gets the job done. And in fairness, he has really sort of steadied the ship in there back up into the fourth now in Champions League spots um, and it looks like that they'll more than likely finish top four so yeah I see them winning to a nil as well I'm going to go I'm going to go two nil Chelsea yeah Sean you, you had a theory we were actually talking off there the podcast we recorded you had a theory that Frank Lampard would still be in the job if there were crowds there yeah I, I think they it would well it certainly would have been a lot um, harder for Roman Abramovich to to sack Lampard I, I just think yeah, I think it's like that. I think if you if you're the fans and you're not seeing the the performances on the pitch, and I think the fans be more unlikely to turn on the players more than the manager because, well, maybe it's just the Chelsea way. I think they they've got rid of so many managers, but I don't think the the players have, or the fans have really had a connection with manager too many managers. Obviously, people like Jose Mourinho, um, 
would certainly be up there. But I think Frank, because he's the, he's the player he was that came through, was one of the first of that kind of Chelsea era was part of that incredible spine they have. I think it's I think he probably would still be there unless results completely turn. Um but you have to remember what he did last year. I mean, let's not forget last year was a very successful season season considering they, you know, sold their best player in Hazard and couldn't really buy. I think he kind of got I'm I'm not sure how it worked there this year with transfers. Was he hundred percent on every one of the players? Because I'd be surprised if he was considering they the talent they already have and the, the type of player they bought. Um so yeah, look. I think it probably is one of them. I think he could still well be in a job, and I think we might have seen other managers maybe fall under a bit more pressure. Um, certainly, people like I'd imagine Steve Bruce would be hounded out by now. Um, I think Mikel Arteta would have come under incredible pressure in December, November when Arsenal lost. I think it was four home games on the bounce, fifteen points after fifteen games. But probably it suited him, and probably went against Frank. Um, but obviously it's worked. Like Roman Ivanovic, this is his his forte. Um. I think everyone knew. I, I was a bit fearful when Tuchel took the job, not because I thought they do, and not because I thought they do so well already. But I thought Chelsea were getting a really tough coach who I probably wanted at Arsenal, or I would have certainly took at Arsenal. Um, or and I'm sure maybe Manchester United fans would have taken them another big club. So Chelsea definitely got a leg up, I think, on the league. Um, considering you know two of the, the coaches like Guardiola and Klopp are two of the best coaches in the world are probably already in the league. So you need a a really top coach. Um, yeah, and, and look, I think Chelsea could could wipe the floor with West Brom. Uh, I think Andrew's right that, and, and Shane are right that it might necessarily be the most flamboyant team to watch at the moment, but they're so effective. And I think, to be honest, at times there's nothing better to watch than, than watching a team that knows what they're doing and everyone knows they're all. Um, the one thing I would say is Big Sam has had a couple of weeks to work with West Brom and West Brom have definitely improved. I think he probably took over too late, too late in the season. The damage maybe done, and probably Billich was unfair to go, um, and everything around it just seems like the club's in a bit of ter- turmoil. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if West Brom put a few results together, but Chelsea to win um two 0 Cool. It's, it's a lot, you, you've had your break for Premier League anyway, Sean. You're ready and ripe. That was a good old um two or three minutes there. So it's good to see your sharp. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> my my mood's a lot better. I just watched the England under twenty ones lose with all that talent that they have. They've just been knocked out of the. Uh, the Euros group stage and the concede in the 92nd minute so my mood is, is a lot better <laughs> it's good to get the context behind it but uh, yeah Eddie Boothroy is definitely under pressure there but um, yeah some good points there lads so we've ch- 3-0 Andrew and 2-0 Shane and we'll stick with you maybe Andrew for the second game Leeds versus Sheffield United um, just your thoughts on Leeds before you get into the score um, what, what's your thoughts on Marcelo Bielsa because we've actually talked a lot about him on the podcast yeah, look, I think he's he's done a super job at Leeds. He took them from being a midland um, mid table side in the championship, and I, I went to actually see Leeds a couple of times over the last number of years, and it's just always looked like they were never going to go anywhere. And you could argue even last year, like he took a team that an awful lot of managers would have had only at mid in at mid table level. Like I don't think a few of these guys are are spectacular players. That the Liam Coopers, Luke Ailings of the world, but. Even Stuart Dallas, he's turned into a, a magic man this year. I think he's a fairly ordinary player overall, but uh, they, they've been superb. Your man, Rafinha, I think is different gravy completely. Mm. Um, and has just added so much there from a quality point of view. The start of the year, they were maybe a little bit frantic. They've kind of settled down a little bit since then. Um, I know they're still involved in a plenty of high-scoring games, but... Uh, in, in comparison to Sheffield United, geez, they can't score. There's no goal scorers in the team. Uh, the, the whole thing's kind of gone to pot now. They've got rid of Wilder. I don't know why they did that. Um, I just I, I feel quite bad because obviously there's an awful lot of Irish players in that Sheffield United team and it's just been a disaster uh, this year. And yeah, it's, it's another one. I'm, I'm going to be going for a, a 2-0 victory for, for Leeds. I'm going to go 2-0. Um, I just I can't see Sheffield United. They don't score enough goals to to be warranting even thinking about them scoring a goal. They might score a peno or something like that, or you know you can always score a goal somewhere. But um, I think this this Leeds team have done well. You know if they finish tenth, eleventh, twelfth or something, it's a major success for them. They can go out in the summer and and reinvest. But the, the key to them is is Bielsa. Like. I, I think if you put another, like if you put an average Joe in in, so, in charge of that team, I think they'd have been struggling this year because uh, I think the defense is bang average. 
uh, especially. And, and they have leaked goals, but I think they'd leak even more goals if somebody else in charge. So uh, I think that the key to probably all of Leeds' business over the summer is to make sure that Bielsa signs on again, because uh, for a club like them, you know, he, he's such a big get. Yeah, and just I know, I know a few Leeds fans, and that's every day they're kind of hoping Bielsa doesn't leave, basically. And it's kind of subsided recently because it just feels like he's there for the long haul. I know that's a dangerous thing to say with a Bielsa. Um, Shane, Leeds versus Sheffield United. Um, Andrew mentioned Chris Wilder there, Sheffield United. Don't really know what they were thinking. Apparently, he, he wanted to resign twice uh, throughout the season. But how do you see this game going? I presume you're kind of leaning towards Leeds as well. Yeah, it's hard not to. Um, Leeds are they're a funny enough side. They're, they're really inconsistent. Like they they got a good uh, good result against Chelsea with the nil all, and then a few weeks ago in February or no, it was late January they beat Leicester, uh, three one. Like they're two cracking results, but then like then even even Villa beat them there only a, a few weeks ago, and like wow, they're wow. in, uh, and that's Arsenal. the first pop, yeah. and, that's the, and that's the second. Well. <laughs> um, they're a bit inconsistent, but you, yeah, you'd have to fancy them here. I, you, you think maybe most of the Sheffield lads are already thinking about the championship with Chris Wilder. Uh, Chris Wilder gone. Uh, most of these, well, all of these lads in the squad are they're Chris Wilder's men, and I, I can see I can see Leeds winning three 0 here. Um, uh, I can't, unfortunately, even with big dizzy up front, I can't see Sheffield getting a goal. So yeah, I'm gonna go with three 0 It's tit for tat at the moment here, Sean, with the two lads. Quick, quick thoughts on this game. Yeah, no, it's actually quite an interesting one because the caretaker for Sheffield United used to manage Leeds, Paul Heckenbottom, one of a number you can add to the list of Steve Evanses and guys who, who manage Leeds in the Baron years. Um, look, I, I, it's probably the, the scene of one, one of Sheffield United's great wins a couple of years ago and it probably shows you how quick football can move. I'd say two or three years ago, the, the win secured them promotion. Chris Basham scored and if you just look at where the clubs have gone and it just shows you how quick Quick move on football is, and God, I really struggle to see a way back for for Sheffield United. Cause I'm not sure what kind of manager they're gonna get. Um, but I don't think ever anything will quite match the fans' expectation. And I think once the club and fans have expectation, it's quite difficult then to manage. And I think that's probably where a lot of second season syndrome has come in and kicked in at Sheffield United and other clubs. But no, I'd expect Leeds um to win pretty well. And the thing about Leeds is. You know, you especially someone like Patrick Bamford. You know, where other clubs might might have players who are you know saving themselves for next year and not really caring. You know, someone like Patrick Bamford, a couple of injuries and he's in that England squad, so he's going to want to maintain his form. So I can see him having a really good run to the end of the season because it's you know it's a once in a lifetime opportunity really to play for England at a at a home potential home Euros final, European final. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think Leeds, uh, Leeds could kick up a, another gear here with um with Bamford and, and Co. Um, yeah, so I look it could it could be a mall. And I mean the the, the Sheffield United performance at Leicester was I actually felt a bit embarrassed watching it a couple of weeks ago. I just fall from grace or whatever. But yeah, I think I think Leeds could win, you know, four or five now. Yeah, interesting. Just on Bamford, a charity Austin's described it as football snobbery. The fact that Patrick Bamford is an in England squad, so that debate will rumble on where he gets in ahead of uh, Andrew Blair White's uh, Ollie Watkins in the summer. We'll see it. I think it's different between the two of them, but uh, it's a good battle in fairness. Uh, Shane Leicester versus Manchester City's next game. Um, City are all, like pretty much walking the league, but I suppose you could argue outside maybe United away. This is the hardest fixture they'll face, and maybe Chelsea away. Do you see see Leicester potentially getting something out of the City team? actually do yeah i was really impressed with leicester against united they in the fa cup um they pressed really high and then just thinking back to when united played city um united united won two nil and united did something similar to city pressed them really high uh, and i think that's something that leicester can do just as well if not better than united um as sean touched on there leicester battered sheffield as well then had a decent result against brighton so they're in they're in decent form in fairness to them. Um, I know City are they're formidable. They're you know that they're a, a league a league above the rest in fairness to them, but they can be got at. Um, so I think uh, I think if Leicester can sort of mirror that performance that, that United had against um, against City, that they can definitely get a result. So I'm going to go for uh, a two all draw. I think it could be it could be the game of the weekend. 
Oh, so this could be your opportunity, Andrew. Now, if you just play it simply and just go Manchester City win, and then you're side your head. That's what they all do, Andrew. That's what they all do. Play it simply. Yeah, look, I think it could be a great game. I'd echo what Shane's saying. Um, I've been very impressed with Leicester this year. I think City have been magnificent, especially since the turn of the new year. I've been pretty snippy in years gone by about Pep, actually. Sometimes it's just kind of he play, he's played sterile football at some of these clubs and you're just passing, passing sake. But this, this team's playing proper ball now uh, with plenty of intensity. Plenty of goals in the team as well. And they seem to be confusing everyone with this no striker system as well when they play it. Um, I, I'm just concerned. Sometimes Leicester just slightly flattered to deceive at home. No Arsenal beat them, Leeds beat them in, in the past month or so. Kind of sloppy enough results. Um, I think they'll be able to score, but I think they might come up a little short. So I was on a Man City 2-1 win. Uh, I think it will be a close game. I can see Shane's point of view, uh, but I think City still have the upper hand. And I think Pep will be anxious that he wants them to really crush this league. I know they already are, but I don't think he'll want them to be just limping over the line in the past last eight, ten games. So um, he'll, he'll want them to put out a, a statement of kind of this is, this is really our league, I suspect. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they were to win 2-1. Yeah, Sean, I'm kind of in between. The lads have made a couple of good arguments for the draw and the, and the City win. I'm actually in between the two, if that makes sense. So maybe you can kind of sell it to me. Where are you going to go for City or Leicester? Um, yeah, when I, was, when I was watching England the other night, there was four of the starters for England were, were Manchester City players. And if, even if you go back a couple of years ago, it was probably only one or, you know, Sterling and Walker, maybe the guarantee. I know Stones have played a lot of games. Um, and Jamie Vardy obviously doesn't play international football. These are the kind of games that he doesn't play international football for. Um, when everyone's been, you know, played three games, a lot of these lads would have played two or three big games in the week. Um, so I definitely think it's a chance for Leicester to build on the the United win. I think if they if they can win the FA Cup, I mean, you've got to remember where Leicester have come from. You know, everyone probably remembers the the Dini goal, the Troy Dini goal against them six or seven years ago. And I think their sustained success has been probably the most um, spectacular thing of that um, the last six or seven years. So if they can if they can win the FA Cup, it'll be a massive year and get Champions League. I mean, it'll be, you know, it, it's hard to rival what they did to win the league, but I think that'd be incredible. Um, yeah, so I kind of fancy, and look, I think it'll be a, a, dip, a, a good game. I'd be interested to see what players Pep use. I'd, I, I'd say we could, probably could see Fernandinho if he's fit, um, because obviously, you know, he's been... Uh, around the training ground. Very interesting to see how much game time Aguero gets between now and the end of the year, um, especially considering that they're still going for all four trophies. So, um, you know, is he just going to be sitting on the bench or is he at least going to get a run in one or two of the competitions? I'd imagine he's, he's going to get a, a good few games to finish off because he'll also be in the shop window himself. He'll want to be playing to get the biggest club and the biggest value offer. Um, and I kind of with Shane, I think probably all that maybe cancels each other out and go 2-2 two, two. Vardy to score Vardy loves scoring against big teams but he loves scoring against Guardiola sides um, and loves scoring against City so uh, yeah I'll go Vardy 2 and uh, City to score 2 as well but I think it, hopefully it's a great game um, some of these games sometimes after the international break and some games even with, without fans are really dull I think every time you watch Leicester fire when they went to Anfield I think they've been really good and the big games have been really um, obviously they've had a few poor results, but I think they've been really um, aggressive on the ball um, and play are playing more direct than maybe last year. Um, so yeah, two two. Okay, I I think I liked Andrew's case. So I'm gonna go with Manchester City win and uh, make make it two all here on the podcast as well. Uh, Shane, we'll go to you because you've said a lot of nice things about both these clubs in the past and Arsenal <laughs> as a Liverpool as a United fan. Um, have you anything nice to say now? Not really, no. Um, three nil. <laughs> they were three nil down against West Ham Arsenal. Oh, that was that was peak Arsenal. I was Fairness, getting, though, they, they did well to come back. What you going to say? I was getting I was getting absolutely battered in in a couple of group chats, and I was just sitting there going. And then we scored the first goal, and I went, "All right, I'm not going to bite." And I didn't bite at all. And then we scored the third goal, and I'm not even biting now because I think we could concede again on the break. And then after, I was like, Look, I'll take a I'll take a three all draw. Yeah, I was watching it with Dan. And 
you know, when the tour go and the end of West Ham, it wasn't even funny anymore. It was just a bit, a bit awkward there. <laughs> I didn't really know what to was say. Pete, well, was I was Pete sort of happy for you lads getting, getting, getting a few goals back. Um, even I was sort of cheering you down. You were, to be fair. You were almost, almost cheering, I'd call it. Yeah, it was more of a pity cheer. But it was like, go on, go on, Arsenal. <laughs> but in fairness, like, then they lost to Olympia because I know that game didn't really matter. But they had a great result against Spurs. Um, they always seem to turn up against the Spurs. Um, but it just just really inconsistent. A little bit like a little bit like Leeds, I suppose. But then on the flip side, looking at Liverpool, I know they've had a couple of clean sheets uh, recently, but only up against the likes of Wolves and Leipzig, who who uh, don't seem to be much of a threat. And then before that, they were on a real barren run. I don't think they'll keep a clean sheet against Arsenal here. Um, and with all that talking, I actually like another two-all draw here. I'm hoping it's going to be one of those you know, old school Liverpool Arsenal classics with Andy Gray and Richard Keyes in the commentary. And well, well, that that, that, one, that definitely draw. won't happen. That definitely won't. No, no, that one won't happen. But you know, when you're watching Premier League years and uh, these uh, Liverpool, Liverpool and Arsenal had some great games. Um, so I, I'm hoping a two all entertaining draw here. Yeah, Andrew, quick, quick, before you get to go into the game, Mikel Arteta, are you a fan? Do you trust the process like us Arsenal fans love saying? Or are you kind of a bit of a skeptic looking from the outside in? Uh, I probably, to be fair, I probably haven't watched enough Arsenal this year, but I did watch that West Ham game, and Christ, it was two different teams playing the two different halves. Like the the, ver- the first first half team would have been beaten up in the League of Ireland, like they were that crap. <laughs> so the second half team actually started playing ball. I was very impressed by your man Odegaard. Mm. He looks a serious player. Mm. Um, really, this game depends on which Arsenal seems to turn up. I think Liverpool have been brutal this year. Absolutely brutal. Um, I don't think it's been excusable at all. You can make cases for for injuries and stuff like that, but people seem to forget Van Dijk was in the centre defence when they conceded seven at Villa Park. Uh, who had um, who had the under who had the overs or the unders on when uh, Andrew's going to bring up the seven two win for Villa? <laughs> yeah, but like this is this is it. Like it wasn't. It was the writing was on the wall early doors with yeah. this Liverpool side this year. Uh, I think they've been poor enough. Uh, that being said, Arsenal seem to be hot and cold. And my Villa hat on wants Arsenal to keep losing because we're in and around the same position. Um, but I've come down on a draw myself. I've gone for a one-all. Um, I would be the same as Shane. I don't think Liverpool will keep a clean sheet. Uh, their defence has been wishy-washy all year. Arsenal... I, I just don't trust Arsenal. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they have the ability in them to, to win a game like this, but are they actually going to do it? And probably going back to your original question, I think you could be trusting the process in inverted commas for a couple of years with Arteta, and I'm not sure it's actually going to go anywhere. Yeah, it is a small bit of parallels between Kenny and Arteta, I guess, Sean, or maybe it's just the fact I support those two teams. But um, there was a qu- question I want to ask you on Liverpool, just going back to the behind closed doors thing, and you mentioned Liverpool uh, in terms of they've missed the fans badly. Uh, is that a good enough excuse? Because Andrew doesn't seem to think so. No, I, th- I think it's the Liverpool thing this year is probably a collection of, of a lot of different issues. It's probably the end maybe of a, that cycle that they've been on. It's been incredible. So I mean, to win the league, or to win the Champions League, then win the league, and to be in, you know, as a three European finals in a row, if you include the Europa League, or three and four years. I mean, they've been that been a breath of fresh air in the league. I think it's the culmination of that. Injuries haven't helped without fans, but I also think sometimes when you win and you're at the end of a cycle, it takes a special team to go again, and sometimes it does take a year out. City have had that. You know, you you need those people driving your team on, and and you need those one or two players in a transfer window to just to just keep you going and, and bring you up that that extra gear and I think it's probably a culmination of different things it's it's you know it, I think it's a fact that Liverpool have missed the fans at home I mean was it six games now they've lost a home in a row it's I ridiculous mean, that's, when you when you say that out loud it's ridiculous it's, isn't it? yeah and, and I think the one before that they drew at, at West Brom and they had fans for the Wolves game probably a week or two before that and they won four now so it's it, it's not the be all and end all of it but you know it's a culmination of a lot of different things uh, I think it's going to be an interesting game. Um, I think it's it's probably going to be one in, in I think, Party against Fabinho in midfield would be a really good game. I think Party has had a couple of poor performances recently. Um, but sometimes when players go away to their international teams, sometimes you can actually help them get a little bit of form back. I'm hoping the same could maybe be said for Aubameyang. Um, he scored for Gabon. 
he's been back for a, you know he's he's been training for the full week now this week so um I think that'll be interesting. Also, I think Lacazette against the two inexperienced Liverpool centre halves because I think Lacazette's very good at that drawing fouls and drawing defenders out of pockets to play in behind them. But I have to mention I have to mention Trent Alexander Arnold. I mean, I cannot believe Gareth Southgate dropped him. Uh, I mean, I, I think I think Gareth Southgate made a massive own goal there, a massive own goal, and I think it could come back to haunt him because I think Gareth Southgate tried to put out a message to the to the players about trying to, you know, make sure your performance is, is good enough. Um, and I think he's just, you know, picked on someone who has been, you know, probably the best English player in the Premier League for maybe top three, at least in the Premier League for the last two or three seasons. Um, and I just think he can afford to do that because he, he knows he wants Kyle Walker playing, but I just thought it was a bizarre drop on it for a player at such a young age. Um, so I think he again he's going to finish the season with a point to prove. Trent Alexander Arnold. Yeah, so I, I don't know. It's, it's a, I, it's going to be a hard one to call. I mean, Andrew's right. You don't know what Arsenal's going to turn up. Sometimes you don't really know what Liverpool's going to turn up this year. Um, but if there is a team that Jurgen Klopp would probably want to play, it's Arsenal because in terms of they'll give you opportunities when they play out from the back and they'll also, um, give you space on the counter attack and that's what Liverpool crave. So, you know, I think it could be three one either side, but. I, yeah, I'd, both both teams will score anyway. I'd say that's the bet anyway. Uh, three one, uh, yeah, three one either side. So it has to be two three, yeah. <laughs> Four goals. There we go. Four goals. Yeah, four goals is a good way of doing. I'm sure that there's the way you can get that on. Uh, Andrew, we'll go to you for Southampton versus Burnley. Now, I was a massive Southampton fan, so I'm running truly off that bandwagon uh, now. Uh, they're massive on a massive downhill spiral. Um, how do you see this game going at home to Burnley? Surely they could probably get a win here. Yeah, look, uh, I quite like what they're trying to do at Southampton. Uh, it looked like it was going great for um, for the first half of the season. I think they really uh, missed Vestergaard in, in centre-half for a couple of weeks. The thing kind of fell apart. They conceded quite a few goals. Um, I don't know why, because like I know there's an, a lot of honest players there and, and, and Deitch has done a good job, but... Burnley are the team I just dislike the most in this league. They add absolute peanuts to the Premier League. Like they do nothing. Like, and actually, I, I went to a Burnley. I was I was lucky enough to be on a school trip in in fifth year, I think, and we went to a Burnley game first game back in the Premier League, and they were home to Swansea. And I was in Turf Moor. I thought the place was going to be one of those old fashioned real havens. God, the place was a library. Like, so the, the fans aren't even that great. They play grim football. They finish 15th or 16th every year. They do nothing for the league. Like, so I really don't like them. Like, I just now they always beat Villa somehow. So, uh, uh, so we've got we've got to the crux of the issue. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. help either. And they uh, wear so, claret and blue. Yeah. <laughs> and they always seem to we always seem to go to Turf Moor and come away with three injuries. Like, is your man Ben Mee's broken around two ankles of the Villa squad in the last year? Like, Anyway, uh, Southampton, I think, could win. I'm hoping for... Uh, I had a, a bit of an epiphany on my fantasy football team the other week and put Che Adams in when they had a double weekend and he scored away to Sheffield United and then scored against City, even though they got thumped. So I'm hoping he scores again uh, and Southampton to win 2-1. I just don't trust them to keep a clean sheet just because they are they can be a bit wishy-washy defensively, but hopefully Che Adams can score a goal. They've got goals in the team. Ward Prowse... Has had a good week with England. Uh, he'll be coming back in, in, in great spirits. I'd like to hope they could get a win. And I think for the good of football, they they try to play better football uh, than the other Claret and Blue punters. So the, the future of football is at stake at 12 o'clock on Sunday, Shane. Um, I <laughs> Regular listeners, I know I, I had a small few quid on Che Adams. Uh, I give up one. on that time, will you? Premier League top goal scorer and he's picking up late. It's, it's like a horse. It's, it's like a horse. It's like a horse. You should, have had, you, should have had him, you should have had him to play international football for Scotland. He would have got better odds. Yeah, yeah. probably would have actually. Yeah. What about yeah. your other one, Dan? Your eight to one to yeah, score so, Ings. Is that what yeah, you're kind of after time or something? Yeah, and after time, eight tell the lads there, tell everyone there. So, so I'd written that bet off, but obviously he's keeps scoring now, and he's only one goal behind Danny Ings. So if not, if nothing else, can people just for two things: one for Andrew's fantasy team, and also for that bet, can they just keep nine Che Adams on Sunday at twelve o'clock? Because the man just cannot score when he's got a simple chance. It's a miracle he's got this many goals. Like for people that watch him, and Andrew, he, he, this has been a he, he, throughout the season he's been like that, but. 
Shane, but enough Che Adams talk, or maybe if you can talk about Che Adams here if you want, but Saints at home to Burnley, surely they'll get a win and Shea Adams get a couple of goals. I have no interest talking about Shea Adams and I didn't enjoy Andrew's slanderous comments about Burnley Town. Absolutely disgraceful. Uh, Burnley Town and Sean Dyche have made, they've literally made a living out of beating sides like Southampton and everyone else in the round. Them. And Villa. Uh, and Villa. Um and you know all of those teams anywhere any team that's in between like 13 to 20 they're in the Burnley zone and Arsenal of course because Arsenal always drop points to, to Burnley um, I just think Southampton are shite to be honest uh, like it's like looking at a horse's form Newcastle beat Southampton with 10 men Newcastle are the worst team in the league uh, I can't have Southampton at all um, I, I don't mind Burnley you know, they, they play football the way, you know, they're not Barcelona, they're not Manchester City, but they know what they're good at. They know what they're not good at. You know, as Andrew said, you you might have to pick up a few injuries away to Burnley, but that's Burnley Town. You know, Burnley Town are going to win 2-0. And uh, Che Adams will come off after 25 minutes with a sore ankle. I know, Shane. I know. Come on. Come on, you've set me off now. You and Andrew. At least, at least get him to an hour so I get my two points. <laughs> <laughs> Angus Adams. Because, Sean, I was actually going to bring you in to defend Bernie Town, but I don't think anyone could de- defend Bernie the way Shane just defended them there. Hold on, hold on. Do you not see them against Everton? Now, like, I've got, like, why McNeil's goal was, honestly, that's one of the goals of the season. Because, you know, it, cause, do you know what, it, nothing better than when the TV camera is behind the goal, or uh, behind the football. And I got out of my chair. I couldn't believe it. It was an unbelievable goal. And, uh, no, I like Bernie. I think I think they had something. Like, you don't, you don't want five or six Burnley's you kind of want one Burnley <laughs> one's enough um, it's only one Burnley shot yeah like <laughs> you can't do you remember when they, they played United on Monday Night Football and it's always that oh they have to go to Burnley and if they go to Burnley then you know they become a ready and if they win there then then we could be looking at someone as a better side than they are but no I like Burnley I think they add they add a bit um, what, what, what on earth do they add to the league but they've got that the different like I don't They're like just watching, genuinely like I don't like watching the same football like Every like you don't want to watch the same football that's played in front the whole time of you on the telly, you know, seven or eight games in a weekend. Bernie just had that little bit of different. Like that, I kind of like seeing teams take pride in their defending because I think the art of defending is probably slowly going out of the game. You watch Ben Mee's headed clearance against Everton with a couple of minutes to go. I mean, him and Tarkovsky are brilliant at what they do. Um, and I think when you're a club of Burnley side who size were probably a championship, potentially even League One club at, at you know, for the size of it is, I think they've overachieved um, what they've done. They haven't gone searching for anything by spending buckets of money and they've made a lot of developments in the training ground. I just think it's, you know, I don't mind a couple of, te- or, you know, one one or two teams playing like that um, in a season, but they have an identity to them. And it's, you know, I like seeing effective football and Burnley do play effective football. Um I have to. I really feel sorry for Robbie Brady coming off injured for Ireland the other night. I mean, the fella just can't catch a break with injuries. Burnley actually have struggled a bit with injuries this year. Um, but yeah, Dwight McNeil's just just lost at the England under twenty one, so I don't know how his confidence will be. But um, yeah, look, it's one of those games. Southampton have been pretty poor at times. Um, I think Ward Prowse has come out of the England squad with a bit of an injury, so they need they. You know, I don't think they can really play their style of football without him. Um, and again, Danny Ings is someone who's who's going to be trying to get in that Euro squad for England. Um, and yeah, one all maybe. Yeah, Andrew, like Jeff Hendrick doesn't play for Burnley anymore. Like you don't have to keep hating him. Oh, geez, don't start me on Jeff Hendrick now. Like you're just winding me up. Like uh, if Sean wants to see people pride defending, he, he needs to go up to Bally Buffet, watch Finn Arps every Friday night. <laughs> and they, uh, they take proper pride in defending and there'll be a few rough tackles in there but I, th- I think because I actually watch so much League of Ireland football where there's so much football played like that that when you get to the Premier League you're hoping for a little bit better than people hoofing it up to Chris Wood and hoping for the best Ashley Barnes like that Joe, Joe that, that Jose Mourinho the football heritage that's what yeah, it is yeah. <laughs> Shit yeah. uh, I, I must say there is a Brit wherever you're watching Gillette Soccer Saturday, it's at three o'clock and you're watching Bernie. There's nothing better than watching Sean Dyche like 
fast walk across the pitch as if he's going over to start a row with someone. It's brilliant. <laughs> and he loves winding up the refs. It's brilliant. Yeah, imagine we run out of time because we spent too long talking about Burnley. Newcastle Spurs, Shane. Um, it was good chat nonetheless. How do you see this game going? Uh, yeah, Spurs had Spurs did a classic Spurs in the Europa League. I know that was a while ago, but we haven't spoken since. So they, they lost. Yeah, to, to take as long as you want on this, by the way. Yeah, no, I will. Yeah. I'm, going, I'm actually going to go back another week, a few days. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll rewind to Arsenal. When they lost to Arsenal. Their customary lost to Arsenal. Everyone could see that coming. And then... <laughs> So I know Zagreb, they lost 3-0. That was an extra time. And then if ever they wanted a game just to steady the ship and get back on winning terms, they played one-man team, Aston Villa, who were missing their one man. So then they, they obviously won 2-0. Uh, and they're playing, they're playing Newcastle. As I said before, Newcastle are the worst team in the league. They, they, yeah, they just they win, don't they? Um, Newcastle... Even Brighton beat Newcastle. Brighton managed to score three goals against Newcastle. Brighton don't 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 score, score goals at all. Um, and Villa managed to get a point off Newcastle as well. So that just shows how bad Newcastle really are. Um, so I fancy Spurs here. I think they'll go on to win three uh, 0 here. Yeah, I was aware there was a slanderous comment comment coming about Jack Reedus and one man team. Andrew, but I was going to prime you for for the Villa game next, but Shane got it in a game early now, which which kind of caught me a bit on the hop. Do you want to kind of respond to that and then tell us who's going to win Newcastle Spurs? Ah, well, well, we'll get on to it when we cover the Villa game. But look, yeah, I I, I think actually, I, I think with Villa they need to the players themselves need to trust themselves more because the way they play would indicate the players themselves think that, that they're a one man team because they don't play with any confidence without them. Um, even though there's plenty of quality there, they just don't use it. Uh, Newcastle have been brutal. Um, Bruce could, could well be sending them down here, to be honest. I don't think he has a clue. He doesn't have a grasp on the situation at all. I obviously know firsthand from his time at Villa that he doesn't have a clue either. Um, he's good at getting teams up from the championship, but it's, it's all short-term goals for him. Um, Spurs, they're hot and cold. They were brutal against Villa actually that was one of the worst games of Premier League football of the year I uh, almost had to turn it off after an hour is that bad and uh, they won 2 nil. and what's up with your man Vinicius keeping the scoring from a yard and then he does this like <laughs> I could I could score from there he did it against the, like the amateur team they played Marie, in the FA Marie, no. and you go like what are you doing like um, that was a goal Andrew at the end of the day <laughs> Yeah, but I could have scored it. Like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> you got to know uh, where to be. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, I think Spurs will win. I think they'll win 3-1. Um, because Newcastle always, you know, Jamal Lascelles or something will rock up with a header. Like, Spurs have a moment of stupidity in them per game at the back. Um, I don't think Larice is anywhere near as good as he used to be either, to be honest. Um. And I would say for Spurs, I just think there's a few bad eggs in that Spurs team. Um, and I I know he's the club captain, but I'd have Lloris first out the door uh, if I was Spurs. I don't think he's a, he's a brilliant influence anymore, to be honest. And they could probably do with a bit of fresh blood in there. Yeah, Sean Lloris is actually going to um, equal or break. I can't remember Thierry Henry's France that, that yeah. record. Yeah, which is fair play to him, I guess. Um, he has, I agree with Andrew, kind of lost his form. Quickly on this game. Yeah, um, on the race, it says it all that if you let Roy Keane, I think called Harry Kane, the Tottenham club captain, and a few others have done, I know it's driving a few of the Spurs fans mad. And I, I, I think Spurs could go back to two up top. I think it kind of it worked pretty well, and I think it's a different um, challenge for them, and it probably takes some of the attention off Harry Kane, your man Vinicius, a um, bit of a handful. So, yeah, I think... Um, I think look, I think Tottenham will win. Uh, be interesting to see if Rowden if plays at the back. I think he's pretty good. And uh, he made a big block for Wales, and I think he's, you know, I think he's much better than Sanchez. And I, to be honest, I don't. I, we could be here all night, but I don't know how Eric Dyer is in the Tottenham, uh, in the Tottenham squad and the England squad. Yeah, well, you're an Arsenal fan, mate of ours, Shane. Don't we? That's not a fan of Eric Dyer, so um, he'll be delighted to hear that. I think you say that, Sean, out loud on, and on the record. Uh, Andrew, sell us the Villa dream. Aston Villa home to Fulham. Easy three points here, surely. I'm looking at you know team tenth of the table against team eighteenth of the table. Nice and simple. Villa win. 
Uh, I wish it was as easy as that. It all depends whether Grealish plays or not. Um, <laughs> I know he's back in training, but if he plays, we win. If he doesn't play, we're very vulnerable. Um, just on the thing you said earlier, uh, I can't. The, and and I know this. You know, people will say, "Oh, this is biased talking." Ollie Watkins is three times the player Patrick Bamford is in terms of what I he agree. does. What he does across the pitch, he has been superb. I know we bought him for thirty million odd. He's been worth every single penny. Uh, he's led the line all year. Barely missed a minute all season. Like between him and Martinez, like they're two of the best boys of the year in in the Premier League. Especially Martinez. Don't know what you guys were doing. Oh, don't give, start. Give, yeah. give, you, give you there, Andrew. I agree with you there. <laughs> um, you know, 20 million for a guy that we could flog in the summer for 60, 70 million now. It's true, it's uh, true. <laughs> like Real Madrid or something could come in for him. That's the, that's the only problem. Yeah, cool, we might lose him. We haven't that good. We ha- I just realised there we haven't thought that true at all. Sorry, what do they have a sell-on clause here? Mm. Yeah, it's out but uh, I'm going, it, it's a bit hard overhead, but I'm going to go for a 2-1 Villa win. Uh, we're good defensively usually. Mings and Kanza have been super. I think Kanza has a outside chance of getting in that Euro squad for England. He's been super as well. Another guy who bought in last year for, I think, 10 million. Could flog him for 40 million now, to be honest. Young English centre-half. Uh, Fulham I've been impressed with, though. Uh, they've been good and I know Mitrovic hasn't been playing but he, he couldn't have had a better international break with Serbia and much to our displeasure um, but I think they have a goal in them all the time they play nice football I like Scott Parker I'd love them to stay up actually um, I don't know whether they're going to be able to or not but uh, 2-1 Villa well, that is probably a bit biased and if I was unbiased I'd say 1-0 oh, uh, uh, we've banned Ireland talk. That's twice now. You've nearly tried to sneak Ireland talk into the, your analysis, Andrew. So that's this is your final warning. Oh, I, ca- I came in off the long run in your comment section there the last day. <laughs> I did, yeah. A little well, three I'm... paragrapher. <laughs> I saw that. I was up all night reading that now, to be honest, let alone replying to it. Uh, Shane Villa doing good business. Yeah, they are. In fairness, uh, Martinez, quality, quality, definitely getting them you know, ten, twenty million pounds a year. Uh, over over the season, um, but. I do fancy I do fancy a draw here. Uh, like Villa, I think Villa have only scored one goal in the last four. And just thinking back to Fulham's game against Leeds, uh, I know they lost 2-1, but they had Fulham, as usual, had uh, a rake of chances. Um, and you think maybe one day they, they might just batter a team 3 or 4 nil. Um, as Andrew said, I would be leaning towards a Fulham win, but it's just whether Greenwich plays or not, you might get 30 minutes, um, especially if Fulham are maybe 1 0 up at that stage. So I, I'm going to go for a uh, one all draw here. Sean, just on yeah. the Kanza thing, sorry, I forgot my question. A uh, quick word on what Andrew's Kanza's, Kanza comment for England. Uh, any, any outside chance? And then how do you see the game going? Um, I think there probably is an outside chance, but Gareth Southgate knows his, his best team. He probably knows his best 23. He, he strikes me as quite a stubborn person. And I think you've probably seen that with Trent Alexander-Arnold being dropped um, and Kyle Walker staying in. Now, Kyle Walker hasn't played nowhere near as many minutes as, you know, James or Alexander-Arnold. And he's got he's a few of them in there. So he strikes me as someone like that. And he, I know he has a leadership group. Um, so I'd imagine a few of those players who are still in the squad are in that. Um, but I wouldn't discount anyone. I, I wouldn't discount someone like Ben Godfrey. Um, but after his performances for the England under twenty ones, I you know he'll probably struggle now. Um Would I take down that woman a clip of you? No, like ben I, Godfrey after the performance, or no, I still no, he like it, I think it was just England were collectively yeah. horrendous. Um he gave the ball away a couple of times playing from the back. They played five at the back, which I don't think suited them either. Um, but sure, I'm probably more qualified than AD, AD Boothroyd anyway. But I don't like it. Fulham, I think Fulham, sometimes in a season things happen for you. And I think the Mitrovic scoring a few goals is massive for um, Scott Parker because he does seem like one of those players. If you can get him fit and firing and, and have that mentality, you know, he can score goals. He's proven he can score goals in, in the Premier League and in the Championship. So I think that's a big plus for them. Um, and I, like, I agree with Andrew. I, I hope Fulham stay up. They add something. Um, Scott Parker, I think. Um, we'll become a really good coach um, and I think um, I'd like to see Fulham stay up but it's, an int- it's a really interesting game and this I agree with Andrew I think Ollie Watkins is better than Patrick Bamford you know I was singing uh, his praises before they signed him um, or after they signed him and 
Um, but it is one of those games. You, you, it's so unpredictable the Premier League anyway, but especially this year. But uh, I'll go with uh, I'll go Fulham to win and Mitrovic to score. You know, probably you probably chip someone again. Yeah, well, he, he scored more goals this week, or the same end of goals this week as he has for the entire season. So there you go. And see the but I also think, one. I was reading a, a, an article on him, I also think he, he missed that big penalty against Scotland if you to knock them out of the, the Euros. And he was really poor and that night as well, because I was watching it. And he's kind of taken a bit of that on the chin. So obviously he had a bit of unfinished business with Serbia. Um, so yeah, look, I, I hope uh, Fulham stay up. And I think if they can get a result here, I think they pile the pressure on Newcastle if it's not already on them. Right, look, we'll go to Manchester United at home to Brighton. Andrew, um, with a United fan sitting there, give us your opinion of Manchester United. They're, they're, they're good. They've got a lot of good players. I actually quite like a lot of the individuals in the team. Um, I'm one of seemingly the few fans or a few people out there that, that I quite rate Martial. I think he's a good player. Uh, he's a moody man now, that's for sure. But um, <laughs> the one the one thing with Man U that I just can't get my head around is the manager. I think the manager's brutal. Um, I don't think they're ever going to win anything with him. Uh, I think you could put any manager in the Premier League in charge of that team and you'd come second or third. Like They've got mm. the quality to be challenging for a title with the players he has at his disposal. And yet every time they get close to doing something, whether it's a semi-final or whether it's in into second in the league, ah, they, they, they run scared. There's no conviction in, in their play. And then they drop off a bit and then they start playing well again. Um there was a desperate defeat to Leicester there in the cup. I think they'll beat Brighton, though. That being said, Brighton have Brighton do the exact same, where they play well for a bit, add a bit of distance between themselves and going down, and then they start playing really averagely again. So then they they're going to get brought back into the mix and then win a couple of games. They're now, I think, safe. Uh, I've gone for a Man U three-one win. Um, you might get a, a bit of quality from the likes of a Trossard or something that may just pop up with a Brighton goal, but I think Manu would be pretty comfortable uh, in a game like this and should collect three points fairly comfortably. Yeah, Shane, what about um, Andrew's comments on Ali Gunnar Solskjaer there? Are you kind of torn between obviously supporting United, they're doing okay this season, and potentially looking at getting a better manager? Yeah, I think I think torn is, is a good way of putting it. Um, like just before we played Leicester, we were on a, a decent run. It's it's funny, like, you wouldn't think that Ollie's like this tactical genius, but every time we go, I'm not saying he is by any stretch of imagination, but any every time we go to the Etihad, we always seem to get a result. I've like, beaten 2 0, and then, then we beat like high flying West Ham. Then we got a great result away um, at the San Siro, and you know, we should, and then we go out and put a performance like that against Leicester. Uh, it was just shocking. Um, the goal, the Inacho goal. I remember I was human, absolutely human at Fred. And, and I, I've said before, like, like I just don't think he's that good. But after sort of the dust settled, and I was looking at a photo when Maguire actually had the ball, like, Maguire has to know better to pass to Fred. Fred's surrounded by four players. Maguire can pass it out to the left back, or he can pass it on to Lindelof, he can pass it out to, um, he can pass it out to Juan Bissaka. Um, I do think, like, Oli just, He's, I think he's a very good man manager. You, you look at Paul Pogba as a great example. Like Pogba was so unhappy, and now I think Pogba is probably leaning towards more signing a new contract with United. Um, and like having these players like Paul Pogba, Bruno Fernandez, Mark Trashford, that's going to attract. That's going to attract you know top talent. Uh, maybe the manager mightn't, but I think the whole squad in general. I think Luke Shaw. He, I think Luke Shaw is like the best left back in. In, in the league um, I do think we have to sort something out with McDominay Fred and Matic like Matic is passive he's he's like Santini in the Gold Cup he's an absolute boat um, <laughs> a show, yeah. bit, of, bit of a chat and reference there so um, in, in saying all that I do think United will win I fancy us to win um, I'd say we'll win maybe 2-1 two, two, although I, I think Brighton as, as Andrew said they've got that little bit of quality but I think you know I don't have enough to get over the line. Interesting what you say about Martial. I think I think it was Damien Delaney said it on Virgin Media. I thought it was, thought it was a great quote. He said, "It's like Martial is he's pissed off at the fact that he has to play." Uh, I thought that was a good way of putting it. I I was 
I was in the Martial camp, but over the last few months, he, he started to annoy me. Um, I don't think his performances have been have been pretty bad. Um, but yeah, I fancy United to win two. Yeah, it feels like a lot of United fans have kind of turned on him, haven't been, you know, backed him through thick and thin, I guess. Um, Sean, quick word on Manchester United. Yeah, look, I, I think they'll win this game. I think Brighton um, are, are probably safe and they might start looking at holidays and uh, that sort of thing. But he's, he's done pretty well, Graham Potter, to recover that situation. And, you know, what I've said a few times in this podcast, if you beat the teams in and around you, you're going to get to where you want to be. And Graham Potter, you know, beat Newcastle, for example, and that's not the way they want to be. Yeah. So, yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I think Brighton will give them a couple of chances. Or, sorry, I think Brighton will give them a couple of scares, but United should win. Yeah. Well, that's brilliant. We'll move on to that final two games. Fly through these lads. Everton at home to Crystal Palace, Shane. Um, Ancelotti, you're a big fan, I think. Yeah, I like Ancelotti. Um, Palace, including Roy Hodgson, uh, and loads of their players are out of contract. And I know all the, the Palace fans want to go a different different way, um, maybe be like a bit more progressive in their football, something like Brighton, which um, you can understand from a fan point of view that they want to play like that, but it's a massive risk. Um, considering Palace have been a solid Premier League club now for years, and if they to bring in a new style, uh, it could either you know push them up to the sort of top half of the table, or you wouldn't be shocked to see them in the Championship. But in saying that, I think Everton should win to nil here, so two nil Everton. Yeah, Andrew, yeah, how you how are you finding the um, Ancelotti project, and how do you see this game going? I believe Everton have got him to be honest he's mm. world class I think he's one of the best managers in the world um, and I think he's doing a good job um, they're probably still a year or two away from being able to really compete at the big table but uh, he's got a few good players guys playing well uh, plenty of good young players in there as well um, I think a few more investments into that side and, and they would be bang there I'd agree exactly with, with what Shane's saying about Crystal Palace Roy Hodgson's the exact type of manager that you go, ah, geez, yeah, it's Roy Hodgson. But it's a bit like Sean Deutsch with Burnley or something like that. If you took him away, they'd go down immediately, I mm. think. Um, I think this Palace team is really average um, and it has been for quite a while and yet he still manages to get them to finish kind of 13th, 14th every year, which isn't the worst. That being said, uh, I think uh, Everton will win and I'm exactly the same as Shane. I think they'll win. 2-0 and I'm hoping for my fantasy football team so I've captained Richarlison that he does wow. the business Ooh, you're obviously playing catch up are you uh, I actually I was in a, a, a I'm, I'm brutal at fantasy football absolutely brutal and I was in a um, I'm in a cricket group thing I was 14th of 15 up until the week beforehand I played my my free hit and put the likes of Trossard in there, and all went super. I'm now up to tenth, so I need to <laughs> consolidate. I'm like I'm like Villa. I've made it. I've made a move. I now need to so- solidify that. Make sure to not go back down. <laughs> Brilliant stuff, Sean. Quick word on uh, Ancelotti and everything. Well, Ancelotti's there for the money at the minute. You know he's getting great cash, and I think it's sometimes, you know, you look at it, you link it to GA when you're a kind of a mid-table county. You know, what's the best thing to do in GA is to throw money at a at a big manager. You know, Mick O'Dwyer has done it in the past. Mickey Hart's gone to loud. It's one of them. And I think Everton have done that. And I think it's it could it could pay dividends for them. Um but just again, they struggled at at home, uh, trying to break a side down. Um and yeah, Crystal Palace pulled results like this out of the bag. Um so yeah, look I, those players are playing for their future, which helps. I think they're in. They're not in a great position because they've so many playing for their future. A manager playing for his future, or you know, working for his future. Palace, but uh, I think they could finish the season stronger, maybe than what people think. Uh, so go two one Palace or something. Brilliant, listen, lads. We're there. Final game. We got to you, Andrew Wolves, at home to West Ham. You've been impressed with David Moyes' West Ham, I take it. Yeah, definitely. Gee, I wouldn't have expected it. It'd be the last person I would have t- thought would have gotten. <laughs> A good performance well, out of a team, but he's he's been he's rolled back the years to his Everton days. Uh, I think both these teams I have a lot of time for. They both try to play decent enough football. Uh, I think they'll be closely matched here. I've gone for a one-all. Wolves have struggled this year to score just without Jimenez. Um, they do have a goal in them, but uh, they've been solid enough defensively at, at the same time. I think these the sides are 
considering that the gulf probably in league positions between the two of them, I think they're closer match than that would indicate. I think Wolves have had a fairly hard season with the Europa League and stuff, but a um, little international break mightn't have done them the worst. And uh, I think one all would be probably a fair enough result between the two. Yeah, Shane, you've been trying to tell us about Jay Lings and Moisey Boy, and I think now we're finally listening. Yeah, and big, big Tommy Suchek got a hat trick there um, on the international break, and Declan Rice is playing well for England. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with the Moisey and Jay Lings. Uh, I, I got to stick with my two boys. Uh, so I'm going to go two nil, two nil West Ham. Um, and see big Tommy getting one and. Jay Lings setting up Antonio for another one. So, yeah, I like 2 0. I'm going to say it. Yeah, Sean, did a quick one, I suppose, because we're running out of time here. Just a quick word. Did Jay, Jay Lingard deserve him getting back in the England squad for you? Um, Yeah, probably with the injuries, you know, with Grealish being injured. Um, But I certainly think he'll stay in the squad because, like I said, I think Southgate has a few players that he likes. He likes that bit of experience. Um, but yeah, obviously, David Moy's done a, a brilliant job. Um. Wolves, yeah, they're one of those sides. They've been very unlucky, obviously, without Jimenez. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be boring, boring enough game. And do you know what the worst thing is? That on Monday Night Football, one of them, either Declan Rice or Connor Cody, are going to be interviewed on Sky, and they're just going to listen to Jamie Carragher flirt with either one of them. So it's just going to be, <laughs> it's going to drive me mad either way. That's something to look forward to, I guess. It's almost like we can spot it, stay up for the Monday Night Football. That's it, lads. Really enjoyed that Premier League predictions. Um, we're back. Um, the All the lads' uh, scores be posted on social media. We'll get that going. Uh, usually on Instagram, we get that going. Um, tiebreaker. We'll pull, yeah, uh, the tiebreakers, yes, before we go. Shane, uh, the tiebreaker is basically just pick the minute, uh, the earliest goals in the score, just in case there is a draw. Shane, earliest goal or earliest minute for the goal. First goal. I want to go fourth minute, Josh Magic. Yeah, you just want to do Josh that. Magic. Yeah, Josh Magic. Magic. You don't have to give a goal score now, but Shane's showing off uh, for uh, earliest minute. Well, he's already he's put it in and Josh Major scoring against Villa. Thanks for that. Like, <laughs> uh, I'll be a cross bit hard, more cross hard. <laughs> yeah, I'll be a bit more conservative. I'll go eleventh uh, minute. Oh wow, geez, no goals first ten minutes there. Born weekend coming, uh, lads. Thanks, Mill, for uh, joining us. Attack and sports social media. We'll do a poll. I think Shane's lost nearly every poll and went gone on to victory, yeah. so it's not a, an indicator how you're actually. Haters motivators, Dan. Haters <laughs> motivators. I know you've got a few out there. We might leak the the list of people that vote against Shane or indeed vote against Andrew. So yeah, Andrew has like seven thousand followers on Twitter. I don't think this is very fair. Yeah, I have. Well, been, I've, I think I've like forty seven. We, uh, we might bring the polls to Twitter this week, I think. Uh, make a special exception. Andrew, get, get your Twitter followers on board. I'll try my best. Although <laughs> half of them hate me because I, I support Villa, which I can't understand. So, somehow 3,500 of them are uh, Birmingham fans. <laughs> <laughs> stick to the football or stick to the horse racing, basically. But uh, yeah, that's it. Really appreciate it, lads. Thanks to the lads. Cheers. Cheers, Dan. Cheers lads. And thanks, Sean. Cheers. And it's at Tack and Sports Social Media. Give us a follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Other than that, enjoy the Premier League. It's back. Have a great weekend.